na maior manifestação política já registrada em São Paulo. Hundreds of thousands of protesters across Brazil. For weeks, Brazil has been consumed by allegations of corruption at the highest level. Leitura de processo de impeachment contra a presidente Dilma Rousseff. The leftist leader is being blamed as Operation Car Wash nears her inner circle. Hello, I'm Barbara Serra, and you're at The Listening Post. These are some of the stories we're looking at this week. The pressure ramps up on the streets and in the media against embattled Brazilian president, Gilma Rousseff. In South Africa, a complex relationship between the Zuma government and news outlets in the country. And he may be getting more coverage than anyone else in the U.S. election race, but Donald Trump definitely does not like the media. They are the worst. In the past week, Brazilians have had wall-to-wall -wall coverage of a political scandal threatening to bring down the country's government. Last Sunday, more than a million people demanded the removal and impeachment of President Dilma Rousseff. It was the latest development in a two-year-long story, an investigation called Operação Lava Jato, Operation Car Wash. The investigation centers on a billion-dollar corruption scandal at Brazil's mammoth oil corporation, Petrobras. The scandal has touched many of President Rousseff's close associates. Operação Lava Jato has dominated the news in Brazil and has brought the biases of the mainstream media starkly into view. Rousseff is the second successive left-wing president to be elected in Brazil, and she and her workers' party complained that they've been in the crosshairs of a mainstream media monopolized by right-wing conglomerates. The corruption story has not made life easy for the Rousseff government. It's battling waves of negative Reporting. However, for many watching the news, well, there is a suspicion that the coverage has just as much to do with pushing the political divide as it has to do with the corruption scandal. The Listening Post's Marcela Pizarro now on the role the media is playing in Brazil's political crisis. On Sunday, the 13th of March, Brazil's largest broadcaster, TV Globo, suspended its regular programming to cover protests across the country. The media had spent a lot of airtime in the run-up, urging people to take to the streets to demand the impeachment of President Dilma Rousseff. Rousseff isn't under investigation herself. Who turns up to protests says a lot about Brazilian politics, society, and its media. The demographic profile of people who went to the streets uh, last Sunday is very particular. They're like upper middle class, white. They're from the southeastern part of Brazil, I mean, the richest part of Brazil. So, you know, there is this bunch of very discontent white middle class folks who do not like the Workers' Party from the beginning, I guess. And this sentiment has been fed uh, and also augmented or increased by the media. And there was one photograph that went viral on Brazilian media that was absolutely outstanding. It was this middle-aged, middle-class couple going to the demonstrations, and right behind them there was the nanny push priming the toddlers. And that's it. You know, you can protest, you can drink. There are a lot of people drinking champagne at this huge... Uh, it was a bit of a, a demonstration carnival, but she has to go there to take care of the toddlers, even in the middle of the demonstration. So this, in a nutshell, is the portrait of Brazilian society. If you don't understand that, you don't understand nothing that's going on at the moment. Brazil is a country of 200 million. Its deep social divides have been at the heart of national politics. For over a decade, the left-wing Workers' Party, led by former President Lula da Silva, oversaw a period of significant economic and social change. The media system, however, remained remarkably untouched. Five families, amongst the richest in Brazil, control 70% of the mainstream media. Rubo Globo, owned by the Marinos, runs the TV Globo network. The Cevita family owns Grupo Abril. That publishes Brazil's most read news weekly, Veja. Grupo Folia is owned by the Frias family. The Sards own Grupo Bandeirantes, and the Macedos own Grupo Records. All five families have been part of the Brazilian establishment, the ruling class, for decades. Neither Lula nor Rousseff pushed for diversity of ownership in the media landscape. The big media houses have remained unmoved. There is a sense that a lot of the media owners have not been capable of living with change, as if they feel too threatened with everything that's happening. Any type of uh, 
ideology which can be perceived as being more progressive is instantly put down, instantly criticized. What the current political crisis does is intensify people's emotions. The country splits into two very clear groups and the debate becomes insane. This is a very serious problem. The traditional media has started to become a target of the current animosity. Even if you can identify a particular political leaning in one news outlet or another, the other side's viewpoint will never be omitted. This would never happen as it does on social media, because the press is committed to listening to all sides. Corruption is not a new story in Brazil. However, no investigation has been as big as Operation Car Wash. At the center of the scandal is the oil behemoth Petrobras. Its executives are accused of taking bribes and making illicit political donations. President Rousseff was head of the corporation between 2003 and 2010. She'd been cleared of any wrongdoing, but more than 30 members of her government are under scrutiny, including her mentor and predecessor, Lula da Silva. This is a big story meriting aggressive coverage, but news outlets have been spurred on further by the head of the investigation, the media savvy judge, Sergio Moro. It would seem as though Moro's media strategy was set out a decade ago, before Operation Car Wash even began. In 2004, he wrote an article about another investigation in Italy called Mani Bolite, or Clean Hands. That campaign's success, wrote Moro, was rooted in how investigators used the media to intoxicate the political atmosphere. In that particular piece, his idea is that the media has to be used, right, or has to work together with the judiciary against the government to discredit the government. So that would be the only way to actually get hold of the corrupt politicians and put them in jail. These investigations are supposedly secret. No. But they are always leaked, and the media actually accuse many people beforehand, before the investigation is concluded. So these people have their reputations thrown into the garbage. They are tried by the public opinion way before you know, they have an actual trial. Why are there so many leaks? Well, this is a typically Brazilian way of conducting these things. There is always a back door, a leak. What we do is to produce coverage that is the most accurate, in the sense that we don't prejudge. There is an opinion section in the newspaper that's reserved to showing the newspaper's views, but to us, who work with journalistic coverage, we limit our reporting to the facts. Not everyone agrees with that assessment. Over the past two years, the news magazines Veja and Eboca have been criticized for their thinly sourced reporting on this story. Alex Cuadros, a journalist based in Sao Paulo, wrote a lengthy piece accusing the two magazines of resorting to vague implications and providing no documentary evidence. And during an evening bulletin on TV Globo this month, protesters stood behind one correspondent holding signs that read, Globo wants to incite a coup, it wants to burn the country. And what people have become more um, conscious about is the ways in which sectors of the media are trying to make political advantage of this issue and thus force an impeachment, force a type of soft coup now through the justice system. It's very shoddy journalism because there's no proof, it's just innuendo. For the developing world, this is one of the most important stories of the past few years and for the foreseeable future. Because it's a corruption war, it's a political economic crisis mixed with an information war at the same time. So everybody has to pay attention.